Hi everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna talk about bitwise operations and bit masking in ARM assembler. Okay, so when we're referring to bitwise operations, as you would probably guess based on the name, is we're dealing with ways of manipulating bits, okay? And these are primarily the ones that we're going to look at. I've listed out here five instructions uh, that are very common for doing some sort of bitwise operations. You might actually add an additional one, like some sort of not operation that flips all the bits. Uh, but that's that's relatively straightforward. Okay, so we're dealing with bitwise operations. We're we're dealing with it at obviously at the bit level, and let's just take one at a time for, as an example of what we're kind of getting at here. Okay, so let's take an AND operation. Let's imagine I have something like uh, like this. Okay, um, where we have these bits. Okay. And if I do an AND operation here, right, I'm looking at each bit one at a time, right, and I'm ANDing each bit together. So if I look at zero, just the rightmost zero, zero ANDed against one, right, that's going to be zero, right, and then we look at the next two bits, zero and zero is zero, one and one is one, and one and zero is zero. Okay, bitwise, we're comparing each bit, right? Um, they're lined up one at a time. Okay. We similarly, we have that with OR. We did some sort of OR operation, zero OR one, zero OR zero, one OR one, one OR zero okay we could also do exclusive or right which is basically it's um similar except it's just we're looking for the scenario where it's only one like so zero or one will be one zero or zero will be zero but in this case the difference between or and exclusive or is if it's one Exclusive or one, it's actually going to be zero in that case. That's the big difference. Okay, so the only bit that's different here between those two is in this scenario here and here. Notice the, the difference. Okay. All right, so we have those bitwise operations, and we're, we're going to see that they're quite useful and we'll, we'll do some examples throughout class. I'm going to try to introduce the topics through video and then we will reinforce with like real examples um, in the context of the course, right? One example that we will follow up on is actually building a little mini assembler and how these are really kind of extremely useful to actually, we need to do a ton of bitwise operations to make that happen. Okay. Um, shifting left, right? If Let's just take an example here. Okay, if we take uh, maybe this number. Okay, which is 15. Okay, we're writing it in binary. Okay, if we shift that left. Okay. I'm going to use that symbol, the two less than symbols together as a shift left by two bits. Okay. That results in this, right? We shifted the bet, the bits left by two. Okay. All right. Every time you shift by one additional bit, it's equivalent to multiplying by two to the i, where i is the number of bits that you shifted. All right, so if we shift once, right, we're multiplying by two. If we shift, shift twice, it's a multiplication by four, right? And we can kind of just visually see this here, right? This is 15, like if I, I'll just pull up a little bit of a programming calculator here. We look at this bit, the original 15, right? One, 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 it's 15 in base, Right, we see it's 15, okay? 
right? If I shift it to the left by two, right? Notice it's 60, it's a multiplication by four. If I do add shift it left once more, it doubles again. I shift it left once more, it doubles again, okay? So shifting left is multiplying by powers of two based on the number of bits that you're shifting, okay? And likewise, right, if you're shifting to the right, right, if we took something where we shifted to the right, let's actually do the same 15, right, if we took this number, okay, and if we shifted it to the right, okay, that's gonna be equivalent to a division by two to the power, dividing by two to the power of twos, where I is the number of bits that we're shifting, right? If we did that, okay, we're gonna end up with this, which is three, okay? So we had 15 here, right? This equals three, we're talking about base 10 there, okay? Now, um, you know, we have a little bit of data loss here because we're, we're talking about bits, we're talking about some, um, you know, we're, we're losing everything that, anything that would be to the right of the decimal, it's a truncation operation, right? We don't have the ability to store anything after the decimal point, so that's lost because we're dealing with integers, okay? Um, so we, we have that, um, it's effectively, you could think of it as we've got the original number Right, and that we're basically doing some sort of like floor, oops, some sort of um, floor operation on it, where we're throwing away everything right to the of the decimal point, where we're dividing, um, where we're shifting right. Okay, so shifting left equivalent to multiplication by powers of two. Shifting right is equivalent to division by powers of two. Okay, um, and we're going to see that the the one of the primary ways in which we want to um, that comes up where where we want to use some bitwise operations, this concept of bit masking, where we want to be able to, we basically have a some sort of, we've got a bunch of bits and we want to manipulate some of the bits, not all of them. We want to leave some of the bits intact and we want to manipulate some of the other bits, okay? Let me give you an example here, right? And then we'll, we'll do a little bit more of a more complicated example momentarily. So say this is my original bits, my original input, okay? And let's say that I want to take this input here and I want to take this information such that I want to take, I want to leave these numbers here. I want to leave them alone, right? I want this part of these bits to remain completely unchanged. Whatever they are, I want them to just remain. Okay, however, these bits here, I want to change them all to make them all zeros. All right, so I'm looking to create a number similar to what we, uh, I want the result to be where these bits are the same. Okay, these bits are the same. And then everything else, these six bits in the middle will be all zeros, okay. Um, well, I can do that, right? If I make a bit mask, right, which is basically I create a different register of values where I have ones in every for every bit I want to keep the same. Okay, so if I want to keep these three bits the same as the original, I'm going to put ones here. Same with these last three bits, these least significant bits. I'm going to leave those as ones because I want to I want these to remain. And then anything I want to zero out, I'm going to put zeros here. Okay. If I do an AND operation, okay, if I do an AND operation where I AND the input versus th this bit mask, that's gonna result in the original bits that I wanted to remain the same, to stay in place, and then forcibly zeroing out all those other bits, okay? So that's usually when we're talking about bit masking, what we're really talking about is that we want to manipulate a portion of an original um, stream of bits, or original uh, register of bits, okay? And this becomes important. We will we'll go through some examples, like real examples doing this, right? And it's like, you know, one example that we will do that's a pretty um, longer example is 
if you tried to, for instance, build an assembler, right, where you're trying to take some assembly language code and dump that assembly code to transform it into machine language, right, you have to separate and manipulate certain portions of a 32-bit machine language instruction, okay. Uh, we'll go into that later on. That's something we'll, we'll do more, more interactively. Okay, so let's look at this. Let's do a more uh, lengthy example, okay, just to kind of get familiar with this. I'm going to talk um, through the process of doing it where we kind of trace it out, and then I will um, we'll go and we'll actually code it in, um, in assembly, Okay, so we'll actually code this in an assembly. So let's take this example here. Let's imagine this is this is the problem that we're trying to deal with. Okay, we have a register R4. That's this register. We have register R4. Okay, we want to isolate bits 3 through 5. Right, we start counting at 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We want to isolate bits 3 through 5. Okay, and the goal is we want these bits here to be the rightmost bits of register five. Okay, we want every other bit to be set to zero. All right, that's the goal. So we're trying to isolate these bits and then we want the end result is that register five is going to have these as their rightmost bits and everything else is gonna be zero. And we can do this using those bitwise operations that we've seen previously, all right, just a moment ago. All right. We're going to add, I'm going to build a register. This is my bit mask. Okay, this register here, and I'm going to save it in register zero. This is the bit mask. Okay. I'm doing this because I want to isolate these bits above. I want to isolate those three bits. Okay. So what I'm effectively doing is I'm moving 56 into a register. Okay. Why 56? Because 56 in binary is 111000. Right? Right? So we can, there's two different ways we can get that, right? One is you could just do it out and say, we want those three bits um, to be isolated, right? I can, I'm looking here in my little programmer calculator, right? If I put that in in binary, we can see in decimal it's 56, right? Another way to get it would be a two-step process where you say, all right, I wanna isolate three bits, right? So I can maybe store seven in a register and then I shift those, right? by a certain number of bits, right? So I could do it as a two-step process where I go effectively um, storing seven in a register, okay? So maybe I do this in assembly where I move into a, some sort of register, the value seven, and then I do a shift left LSL stands for logical shift left, right? We could also do LSR, which is a logical shift right. And I could take this number here and shift it to the right by three. Okay, so what we that effectively do in that case is we create something where it's one, 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 and then we've shifted that to the left by three. So we have one, 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 zero, 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 Okay, the same as the information that's shown here in this register. All right here, I just did it as a single step. I just put 56 into a register. Okay. Now, if I AND, I do a bitwise AND operation against register 4 in this register, register 0, right? This is going to be the result, right? Any bits that had 0 in them in register 0 is going to force the register four bits, the output to be zero in the corresponding bits, right? It's a guarantee, right? Because if you and zero against anything, it's a guarantee it's going to be zero, right? 
anything where we had a one in our bit mask, we're gonna select whatever the original value is, right? So if the original value is a one, one anded against one is gonna be one, zero anded against one is gonna be zero. So we're maintaining the original input, okay? So the result of that is, is we get this, this uh, register here that we're using as R5, okay, is gonna store our results, right, where we've isolated those three bits, we set everything else to zero, right? But the goal was that we wanted it to be the rightmost bits of register R5, right? So that's okay, we'll do that. We've, we isolated those bits, let's just shift them to the right by three, shift them to the right by three to do that, right? LSR, in ARM assembler is logical shift right, we're just shifting them to the right three to get them right where we want them to be. Okay. All right, let's do, um, maybe let's do one more. Okay, let's do one more. Uh, this one's a little bit more um, detailed because uh, it makes some assumptions here. Okay, so let's just read through the, the question and say, okay, the, and get a better handle of what we're trying to accomplish. So the goal in this one is we want to copy the bits, the last four bits, bits three through zero. These last four bits, right? We want to copy them to be the these four bits in R1, right? They're going to be in a different location, bits six through three. Okay. And we have a very, very important assumption that we're going to leverage here is that R1, these bits um, in R1, right, bits six through three, okay? We know that those bits are already set to zero. That's gonna, right, so it's effectively, if we look at the bits R1, we know that these bits here are already set to zero. It's given to us in the context of the problem, right? Now we can imagine if you wanted to set, force set them to zero, you could do that. We've actually just learned how to do that in the prior step, right? If you wanted to force set those bits to zero as a prerequisite to coming into this problem, you could. You could do a bit mass just like we saw in the previous problem. We can force set those bits to zero and leave all the other ones intact, okay? But in the context of this problem, especially to show it in a smaller number of steps, we're going to assume that we already know that, okay? All right, so how do we do this? How do we do this? Well, okay, a good first step is to say, right, we want to isolate, right, if the goal here is to isolate these four bits in R0, we can do that. And how I did that was similar to what we just saw in the previous problem, right, I'm doing this here, right, anding this register, I'm taking an and operation of that register against the immediate value 15. 15 is four ones in a row, right? One, 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 15 in binary, right? If we anded these together, right? If we did an and operation of this versus this register, okay? We're gonna isolate those last four bits, just like we saw in the last example, okay? Now we're gonna line things up properly. We isolated those bits, let's line things up properly. Let's shift these left by three so that they line up with what we were talking about for R1. So here we're doing a logical shift left. Remember that just like any sort of add instruction and things that we've seen in assembler prior, the leftmost re register is our destination register. This is the one that we're writing to, right? This is the one we're we're reading and this is the number of bits we're shifting by, okay? If that wasn't clear before, I just kind of point that out, right? We're reading this register, we're shifting it left by this many bits and then we're storing the result here, okay? So we have this register here, we're shifting it left by three, we get this result, we're storing it back in R0, all right? Now let's assume that this is our values of R1. I just made up a bunch of, all the bits in purple are the ones I just made up, assume there's some numbers in there. However, we know from the problem told us that bits six through three are already zero, okay? Because we know that they're zero, right? 
it's telling us the nature of the problem is we want to have all of the bits in purple remain intact. Okay? All of the bits in purple we want to remain intact. And we want to combine it with these bits here, 6 through 3. Okay? If we do an OR operation against these, right? Because we look at, we have, basically we have on each register, we have, a, we have a, something we forcibly set to zero effectively, right? These registers, this is all zero. Then these four, it's the other register, they're all zero. Then here, these three are all zero, okay? If we OR this together, we're combining the values of everything else that's not, that we didn't set to zero. We're combining all of these, Plus, we're combining these four and then these four to get the result, right? So an OR operation, right? As long as we have one of the bits is one, we, it maintains it, okay? And because we know that there's a, the other corresponding register had something forced to zero, we're going to get, right? We're, we're matching what the corresponding bits that we want, right? If it's a one here, we're going to get a one. If it's a zero here, we know we're going to get a zero here because we forcibly set that to zero, Okay, same over here. If it's a one here, we know we're gonna get a one on our output because we know that this bit's a zero, okay? So it's allowing us to test if effectively if certain register values are, are zeros or one, right? Using these bitwise operations, okay? All right, so in this video, right, watch it multiple times if you need to, we'll practice it in class. Um, we're getting, we're looking at the assembler bitwise operations okay we will also follow up where we look at them in the context of c programming as well all right so we will look at them in the context of c programming uh, where you can also deal and manipulate um, and work with bitwise operations which is going to be quite useful for us all right so thanks for wa uh, watching please feel free to ping me with questions and otherwise i'll see you in class and or the next video